Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Brick by Brick. And today we've set number 70909. This is the LEGO Batman movie. That gave break in containing 1,047 pieces and retailing for $99.99. It contains a total of seven minifigures and two penguins and builds up a bat cave of decent size as well as two side vehicles. They're actually relatively big uh, in the form of this bat boat and the penguins penguin vehicle thing and uh, the back of the box just shows some features and stuff and you know uh, I was of mixed opinion on this set uh, pretty much the entire time it was out uh, I really wanted these bat suits uh, but I don't know the rest of the bat cave didn't really do it for me based on the pictures uh, so I, I was gonna pass on it but then uh, clearance hit and it uh, I found it for $49 and uh, that, was, that was too tempting so I bought it and it sat unbuilt in my backlog for over a year so I'm very excited about the set as you can tell um, so you know I finally built it uh, let's see was it worth the clearance purchase or did I make a mistake and here's the completed build along with both side builds everything all together and it sort of makes sense if you view the whole bottom layer underneath these lights to be water. Uh, then this is sort of like an amphibious vehicle, I guess. And then you have this boat here. But there's no suggestion of water really at all. Uh, which just right off the bat makes it a little bit weird. And kind of detracts from feeling like the Lego Batman movie Batcave. Uh, as that was kind of defined by the presence of water like everywhere um, but I don't, I don't know the dark tan also is kind of a little bit weird so just right off the bat it just looks a tad strange to me but let, let's start with these of course the set is called the Batcave cave break in and this is what it's doing the breaking in it is the penguins duck mobile as they officially call it uh, and it's it's kind of wacky and goofy and fits the batman movie uh, aesthetic uh, it's got uh or we also have these penguin goons, which take a look at with the minifigures, but so you know he's not completely alone. But this is kind of the big bulk of what is doing the breaking, and yeah, it's it's a thing. Uh, it's the duck head is cool, and that's kind of built using some uh, some jumpers, some offsets. Uh, there's a little bit of gappiness, and you can see some studs, but other than that, uh, it's it's got a pretty pretty decent look. I like the use of this piece in particular for the beak. I think that works really well. But aside from the head, the shaping is a little bit strange. Like, and I guess it sort of looks like a swimming duck, but like, I don't know how, how it gets a little bit thinner in the back, but this area is a little bit weird to me. Uh, but regardless, I think that it is definitely wacky and goofy enough. Uh, one complaint is that these stud shooters, which are here to shoot off, they're a little bit hard to get to, um, you know, with regular, you know, human hands. Uh, kids will probably have an easier time getting into them, but it's just a little bit of a small space. We do have some flick missiles, which the flick missiles are actually made up of flick missiles. So flick missile, flick missile with a one by one round brick in the middle. And you have those as well as Dutch on either side. Uh, these are just for decoration. And then we have these little torpedoes or bombs here, which you can articulate their own ball joints. I guess you could pull them off of, whoops, that's not what I meant. Uh, I don't want to pull that off. But you could pull them off of the ball joint piece and view them as something you can launch as well. Uh, it says duck and cover on either side, which is kind of kind of neat because this is a duck mobile. And then we do have these stickers which add a little bit of like uh, bolt detailing and really nothing crazy special, but they're there, so kind of cool. And we have this propeller which reminds me of Power Miners, so uh, that's, that's cool because I had that small Power Miners stone chopper bike set and the front just has some lights and there's just a seat in here which is medium lilac uh, for the um, the back uh, rest of the seat and since penguin can't sit down it kind of has to get slid onto that panel uh, at an angle which is a little bit weird but completely legal technique because uh, you're not really attaching him at all and there's just a lever there as well uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see the figure later but the vehicle's alright but I think the biggest problem with the penguins vehicle is that as goofy and fun as it is it really doesn't add to the aesthetic of a bat cave it doesn't feel like you need it it kind of feels like a waste of parts this 
yes, it doesn't go towards the structure build of the Batcave, but having a boat, uh, you know, to display with the Batcave, I think is is decent. It works, and yeah, this boat is pretty sleek. It's got like a really really sleek uh, design here. Uh, it's labeled as Riptide on either side with a sticker, and then you have a sticker on the back as well. And then we have these two stickers, which remind me a lot of the Ultimate Batmobile. Uh, this design, uh, it's overall graphic design. Um, there are all clear back stickers in this set, which is kind of kind of a pain. But if you get around that, uh, I think that they do add some good detail to the set. And I'm you know, just having the red here. Uh, I don't know. I, I like that for Batman with the black and red and yellow. It uh, works for me. So I overall like the color scheme of like a Batman movie vehicles. We also have these stud shooters on the side, which get shot off and lost. Uh, but, you know, those are angled down. They can't angle down any lower, but they can kind of angle upwards just a little bit. I think they're designed to be static, but you can do that if you want. And inside, there is a little bit of a console, which is created with a sticker. It only has a steering wheel, and your Batman figure can sit in there perfectly fine. And he does get to lean back a lot, uh, which, you know, whoops, uh, it looks a little bit weird with his cowl turned to the side, but... You know, it gets a good look when you have it looking straight on. Getting that cockpit piece in trans yellow is cool, and yeah, I mean, other than that, it's got this cool engine at the back, but that's all for Batman's uh, bat boat, aside from the play feature, which right behind this hood scoop, we have this uh, little Technic thing, which actually is a little bit loose, because that's how you shoot off some spring-loaded shooters. And all you do is push it down, and it'll shoot one at a time, depending on which side of it you're pushing on. And all it does is just end up pushing down a little Technic piece in the back, and you know, it just shoots out. Works really well. It's really simple. Uh, I like that feature. And it also has these telescopes here to design to look like the guns that are actually being shot. And the spring-loaded shooter is right next to it. And yeah, then we move on to the Batcave itself, and the Batcave itself is kind of underwhelming, I feel. The only areas here that are supposed to be accessed by figures are... And I guess this prison cell, this area, and then this center section is like the real place where figures would intentionally stand. Um, we'll start over with this side here. And then over here we'd have Bruce Wayne, and you know, he, he's just Bruce Wayne, I don't know. He's Batman's roommate, and he's just hanging down, and what you do is you actually just uh, turn this around to trap Bruce Wayne. And then Batman walks out, obviously. Uh, no transformation here. It is just a secret uh, location to hide your roommate if he accidentally stumbles into your bat cave. Uh, but, you know, with that being said, Batman can leave, and then he gets uh, a little bit stuck here. This is just a lever to turn that around. You don't want to do that, because then you'll release the uh, Bruce Wayne. There's a little bat hanging around here, and a little bit of dark tan, and it's kind of weird, kind of ugly. Above it is just a little bit of a walkway, which is a little bit strange, and a figure would... Actually, we can't use him, because we're going to need him for story purposes, but Alfred can just walk along here and walk upwards at a weird angle, and then over here, and I guess, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. The walkway is a little bit strange and doesn't really lead to any areas, which just makes it odd. But the one walkway that does lead to places is this, because it looks like it leads nowhere, but there's actually this uh, spinning thing uh, that goes around with the center section, and you can just walk on there, and it can spin around and bring you up here to the center area. Uh, it doesn't have enough uh, friction to hold a figure on it though, so you really kind of just have to uh, play with that on your own and like actually physically hold it up, which is kind of unfortunate, but you know, it does work and it kind of looks like the things that are used in the movie. Uh, but that brings us up here to the center section, which this whole area can rotate around completely 360 degrees, and this platform, if it's sticking out, will kind of affect that. And it, it as I, uh, I mentioned before, it has a little bit of problems holding a figure up at that height. It will stay at that height by itself perfectly fine, that's just when you put a figure on it. But there is the whole bat computer section here, uh, which has a lot of sticker detail. And granted, the finished results look pretty good, but it's definitely a lot of stickers. And you've got the chair here, which it would have been cool if they used the uh, the ones with these that curve off at the edge and just create the little bat shape, sort of more like it looks in the movie. But uh, those didn't, or those weren't really common at this point. So you know, I'm not uh, surprised that they didn't do it. But yeah, it's it's. Got some good sticker detailing here. I particularly like the emergency shutoff sticker. That's a pretty good one. 
uh, but oh, it looks pretty good. And this here is a print 2x2 two two tile. I think it was used in a junior set or something, and that's why it's here. And then we have the Bat Computer, which has a lot of uh, little uh, Easter eggs for stuff in the set. You got the Duckmobile, you got the Bat Boat, you got the Batman Mask uh, Pretzel. I don't know what that's about. But, you know, some, some good stickers here, and that looks like a bat. And the outsides of that can be angled inwards or outwards. Uh, usually, I like to get one thing in. And the one other feature in this area is that there are these two little things which you can flip around, and it reveals clips for things. Uh, this one over here is pre-equipped with a batarang, and you could put a batarang on the other one too if you wanted to, but, you know, those are very, very simple. You just turn them around manually. Over here we have a prison cell, so if you catch the penguin, you can take him and you can chuck him in the prison and there is really nothing special in this prison at all it's just just a prison uh, it's got two doors uh, but you know it, it's just a prison aside from this lever which all that does is pop open the back as you can see right there it's a super simple mechanism just uh, just a technique thing I'll show it from the back and from back here uh, you know it, all it does is move this yellow thing and push that outwards and might feel a little bit bad for Penguin now that you can see uh, the prison cell a little bit better. Because it's only two studs deep, and, you know, he's just kind of, he's really just stuck in here. Uh, good thing he's the only one, so otherwise it would be a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, not that it probably is uncomfortable right now on his own, uh, but you know, probably best to leave him lying in there. And then over here in the center, just structural, there's nothing from the back. And then over here, just use the tan, big, ugly rock piece, and that's really the only detailing from the back. And again, even up here on the walkway, there's nothing behind this back computer. It still just looks bad. And the last section here is probably my favorite, mainly because of the minifigures included, but uh, you do have this suit rack, which has overall seven slots, and you can just turn this around. Uh, there are four empty slots here, which you could replace with you know, any sort of uh, CMF variants of him, different suits. Uh, you could also use the ones from the Bat Space Shuttle if you don't like that suit rack. I personally don't keep it, like keeping the Reggae Batman on there because uh, it has, or it seems like it uh, will scrunch up the back of his cape just a little, so I leave my Reggae Batman here now. And you could also put a regular Batman suit if you wanted to, all sorts of things, and I, mean, I guess just to fill it out we'll put an Alfred and a, uh, okay, yeah sure, and a Hulk. Uh, and you know, just to prove that you can fit seven minifigures and it still rotates all the way around perfectly fine. And you know, this is a good motion. I like the motion of this. I think it works well. It looks good. Uh, the motion that is. Uh, it's not very well finished. Like it, it's got some yellow sticking out. I guess that doesn't stand out too too much. But I don't know. It, it's I like the appearance of the Bat Space Shuttle one, but this one probably works better. And the last thing to point out with this set is that you can remove uh, sections like that. Uh, they're just attached with Technic pins. Uh, I think the suit changer is as well. So you could swap the positions of those if you'd like to. Uh, the rest of it, the center section uh, that is not the prison and the uh, the suit changer, those cannot be moved. It's just these two. And the suit changer actually has to be attached on that one side. or the not the suit changer, but the um, the Bruce Wayne hider thing, and this one can only be attached to that one side, but it uh, you know it looks fine anyway because it's all the same all the way around. But you no, know, this isn't really designed to be modular. I'm just saying that it can be done. So if you had maybe other modules that you wanted to work in, you could. Uh, it's just these ones really don't work in too well. And we'll start with the two least interesting figures in the set, and those are Batman and Bruce Wayne. Totally different people because you can see both of them at the same time, but you know they're they're okay. I mean, Batman is just the standard like a Batman movie Batman, so he's just so common, and I have a ton of them that he wasn't exciting to me at all. Uh, but I, you do kind of have to have him in the set. Uh, that face print is not a very uh, difficult to find one. I'm not gonna bother removing his torso because you've seen Batman movie Batman. Bruce Wayne is a little bit interesting, though. Uh, he has the dog trainer hair in black, which this is the first time we got him in that color. It's since been reused a couple times, particularly with Claw from Black Panther. Uh, but, you know, it's a cool piece. And his face is nice. I like the printing for his tuxedo on the torso and the hips. It looks pretty good. And if we turn uh, that around, you can see he's got a tiny bit of back printing, a nice alternate winking face. 
which is framed up pretty well by the hair, and I like that. And he's got uh, Batman's got the angry face and a little bit of back printing on the torso. Uh, he comes with two batarangs. Bruce Wayne comes with a single glass. And the bow tie piece with Bruce Wayne is nice to get as well. And the tiniest bit of printing was hidden by the bow tie. Uh, but, you know, if you don't know how that works, it just goes around the neck. And it's a pretty good part introduced for this theme, too. So it was a new thing at this point. And the only non Batman figures in the set are Alfred and the Penguin. The Penguin also appears in the $30 Penguin car something, uh, but this is a different version of him because he has a different face print. He has the new top hat piece, which is cool, and the sort of uh, laughing face, I guess. He's got a umbrella piece, which was also new at the time, which is cool, and he's got a little bit of printing on his arms, which is nice, uh, as well as no back printing for either of these figures, but Alfred has the coattail fabric piece, which is pretty cool. Also, no alternate expressions for either of these, but the head print and the um, hair slash bald head combo piece was pretty cool to get, as well as Alfred comes with that bow tie piece, which this set actually comes with two extra of, which is a little bit uh, interesting. And the torso print on him is really good. And the torso print on Penguin is pretty good as well, but he also has this new um, kind of fur collar piece, which I thought at first it was going to be a different color of Craven's, but it's actually a new mold, which is kind of cool. And if we remove that, uh, the torso printing underneath is pretty good. I mean, not too much was it obscured, but uh, I, th I like the torso for this guy, uh, especially with the addition of that nice little arm printing. Uh, the white on the arms and on the torso isn't like the most opaque ever, but it doesn't detract too much because it, it looks pretty uh, pretty decent uh, as far as the color. It's not bright white, but I don't think it really had to be. It's not as bad as when it's, you know, like flesh tone that isn't actually flesh tone. And of the cool bat suits, first we'll take a look at the bat pack and the raging bat suit. And both of these I think are really great. I like them a lot. Uh, the bat pack comes with a microphone with, it's just black with the gold top. I believe we've gotten that before, uh, I think with the wrapper CMF from Series 3. So it's been a long time, and I don't think it's the world's most common color for that. But it is nice to get here. And I like how his uh, bow tie is a bat shape. And he has a little bit of sparkle printing on his uh, arms, both arms, which is good. And the Raging Bat suit has some side printing on the legs, which is cool. Uh, I like the leg print for them. They're dual molded. And no leg print on the bat pack, but I don't think it was really necessary. The torso of the, uh, the Raging Bat is pretty good. You could actually probably use that for just a regular Batman suit if you wanted to make your own custom one. Of course, this one does have the purple boxing gloves, which are new. And the cowls for both of them are uh, pretty uncommon. This one has appeared on a couple of figures, and this one only otherwise appeared on the uh, Disco Batman and the Tears of Batman polybag. Uh, and, you know, uh, neither of them have a face print, it's just a plain white head underneath. And if we flip that up, we can see there's a little bit of back printing, uh, which shows the belt, and there is a little bit of back print underneath the Raging Bat suit, or underneath the backpack, I mean, which is just sparkly again. And this has the really shiny gold on the inside, which uh, they use the same thing for the Disco Batman from that poly bag, uh, but they flip it uh, so that the gold is on the outside. Uh, but that's a really cool cape, and I like that a lot. And the last up is the Scoo Bat suit, and the color scheme of this really reminds me of the Series 1 Diver CMF. And the torso print and everything, and the design looks pretty similar aside from the fact that he has a Batman logo. Uh, that's the breather piece that they first introduced, uh, I think, in the Avengers Space Mission, uh, that wave of sets. Uh, I think they first introduced that there, and this one is in orange for the first time ever. You do get an extra piece of that, actually. And I think that the short style of Cal is actually exclusive here in light blue. And obviously I did just take his orange flippers off, which we've seen those before. Uh, but, you know, he can't stand on a minifigure stand with those, so you know, I had to take it off. And there's a little bit of a zipper, and uh, just a little bit more of the design carried over onto this figure. The orange uh, utility belt is uncommon, but I believe it appeared on uh, some other character that I don't remember. Ah, I got it. Arkham Catwoman. Uh, but these are the Penguin Goons, and they're better than the Brickville Penguin Goons. As much as I liked those uh, back when they were first done in the older superhero sets, I thought those were kind of clever, and in the in the games as well, I thought those were kind of cute. But these ones, I think, are a little bit more uh, detailed. Uh, they're basically the same exact penguin uh, mold that was used with the Wildlife Explorer uh, CMF from Series 16. Except these ones have red eyes and are kind of 
robots and they have these back attachments and the back attachments are just attached to the stud that is uh, on the mold of the penguin and they have a buzz saw as well as a arm as well as this uh, red light which indicates that they're evil because if they didn't have a red light they'd be good robot penguins and you really don't want to accidentally hurt those guys because yeah overall i think that the figures here are pretty good yes most of them are comic bat suits but you know they're they're cool they're nice and i i enjoyed collecting them through the like a movie sets um and alfred is a really good figure as well uh, and i think this is the best version of alfred that we've gotten uh in regular attire i mean the uh the other versions of him and the Lego Batman movie were both well done, but this is the only set where you can get just a plain old Alfred in street clothes. And the Bruce Wayne figure is is good. Uh, it's nothing crazy special, but it's nice to get, as well as with the new uh, face print, especially. And the tuxedo is, is good, I guess. Uh, but And the penguin... He's he's pretty nice um, as far as villain figures go. Probably the best version of the Penguin. I, maybe I don't love the face, but the torso print is fantastic as well as the fur collar piece. And the Penguin Dunes, you know, those are the best versions of Penguin Dunes that we've gotten. But I just don't really like the layout of this Bat Cave. I think it's it's really weird. Like I, I don't know. I mean. The the bat computer is coolish, I guess, and this layout is kind of cool. But you really can't use half of this space. It feels feels very inefficiently designed. Maybe that's the way to put it. I I mean, it it doesn't look great, and the playability isn't great. The figures are great, but. I mean, this is really the only play feature that I really like. I like this suit display rack. Uh, they are just on a single Technic pin, though, so they kind of can move side to side. So I, I wouldn't even say that it's, uh, like, super duper well designed. I think that it's just kind of fun. But, I mean, the the boat is cool, uh, too. I, I can respect that. But I just, I just don't love too much in this set. And I definitely would not pay $100 for this. For the forty nine dollars I paid, I don't think I'm unhappy. I think I, I mean, even just for parts, it, it's not bad, and with the figures here too. But I think the thing that disappoints me is the Lego Batman movie gave us the best versions of a bunch of Batman's vehicles, like the Batwing. I think we had the best Batwing from the Batman movie. The Batmobile, the Ultimate Batmobile, is amazing. But this is kind of a disappointment for a bad cave. Uh, I honestly. Stand by my opinion that the Samurai X Cave Chaos is a way better set than any Bat Cave Lego has ever made, and that's kind of kind of disappointing. Uh, I you'd think they'd be able to do something to the same effect as that set for Batman. Uh, just honestly, change out some of the stickers and some of the details, and uh, you could make that a Bat Cave. Uh, it's it's not that hard. Uh, Lego hasn't done it yet, though, and apparently, maybe they won't, because I, I feel like if they were ever going to go all out on a Batcave, it would have been for the Batman movie. Um, and this is not including the 60s Batcave. I'm not going to include that in this comparison, because it is like a large direct-to-consumer set, and I'm considering, you know, just regular retail. But it's... It's, it's not terrible. It's not great by any means at all. However, the one thing that I do want to mention before we end off the video is they actually advertise in the instructions of the Bat Shuttle set, Bat Space Shuttle, that you can combine that set with this one, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to do that in a video that will be coming out soon, and it's, uh, it, it's a thing, so stay tuned for that, um, and, yeah, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did. Let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.